All right, thank you guys. We are here, three comic money, uh, three C, the com comic contributor chats here. We're here with Kevin Scott. Does that say right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, we we had a debate on whether or not that'd be right, and they, these guys yeah. told me that's the one to go with. So Kevin it's Scott, uh, he amazingly, I did not know he was going to be writing the book that everyone knows he writes now. When I asked him to be on the show, I I started reading uh, reading this book called Shadow Service. Um, it's by Vault Comics, and I was just intrigued. I thought it was a great story. I read the first two issues. So I was like, Hey, I'd love to talk to him some more. I reached out mm -hmm. to him and then, and then at the same time started doing the research and went, Oh crap. He writes a new <laughs> star Wars book. This book came out that, that everyone's going crazy for. So we're going to talk shadow service and hopefully he might talk to us a little bit about star Wars and also some, and you look at his resume of books he's written and you're going, I read that one. And I, I just <laughs> did not realize because sadly your first name doesn't show up on the books. It's just Scott no. a lot of times. So it's right. like, there's a bunch of Scots out there. So it's, sometimes you don't read the first name of some of the guys. So, yep. um, but I loved shadow service. Oh, thank you. Um, I, my, my colleagues haven't had a chance to jump into it. I think it's just a great story. But uh, you tried your ass off though. I tried. <laughs> I, since the second I, we got you, I'm like, Hey okay, guys, you got to read this. And they're like, both, no, we're going to read star Wars. And I'm like, both no, Chris and I live in Tennessee <laughs> and we shop at similar shops. And I ran into right. him a couple of weeks ago at the shelves and he pulled that book off the shelf and said, you have to read this. This is fantastic. Oh, and by Excellent. the way, I'm going to try to get this guy on the show. And this, yeah. again, like this was long before high Republic. So we were, he was geeking out over the other book. So he has tried. I just haven't gotten that far yet. I'm getting there. That's good. I'm getting That's there. good. This is what I'm talking about here, guys. I forgot. Mm -hmm. We can throw these covers up and sort of let you see what they look like. Um, but Kevin, can, Kevin, can you talk to us about like, what gave you the idea for this book? Sure. So shadow service has been brewing for years. Absolutely. Years. Um, as people can probably tell from my accent, I'm a Brit. And so I grew up in the 1970s where the world, my sort of pop culture world was dominated by Star Wars, which is handy, um, Doctor Who, Hammer Horror, um, and all the things that tried to scare kids silly in the 1970s. Basically, 1970s TV for kids was just horror filled. It was everything from even like the adverts to stop people playing in streams were. <laughs> We had this wonderful one over here when it was Donald Pleasance playing death in an advert aimed at children to stop them playing in streams of woods. And it's, it's basically him as the Grim Reaper going, oh, yes, I wait for you to come and see me. Um, and so, That's terrifying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I want to see this. <laughs> um, and things like 2000 AD and all these things I was getting into, it was really, you know, horror was right up there, which is, explains a lot about the stuff I like and the stuff mm. I write now. Um, and obviously the other thing was James Bond because I'm a Brit, I'm a Brit, I'm supposed to like James Bond, it's written into <laughs> our constitution. Um, so between that and the combination of, of things like Doctor Who, which had UNIT, which was a paramilitary organization that mm. fought aliens and monsters that the Doctor worked with, I was always fascinated by these, uh, an idea of sort of a spy service that dealt with the supernatural and the monsters. Um, there was another comic called Scream, which is a real, this is real inside baseball stuff for, for British comics. Scream was published by the same people in the 2000 AD, and it was 2000 AD. Um, if people don't know what 2000 AD is, that's a weekly science fiction comic. This was the weekly horror comic that went with it. And it didn't last that long, but it had a strip in it called um, The Dracula File, which was about a KGB officer um, defecting from Russia because he's found out that Dracula's come to it, Britain. Uh, and the Russians are all going, brilliant, let him deal with that. You know, <laughs> the Dracula will infect the entire British Isles. And the KGB guy goes, no, we can't let that happen. That's really bad. And so he defects to find Dracula. And I love that strip. And so, again, it was that thing of monsters and spies. And it's just always stayed with me. Um, and then, yeah, years later, I came up with the, the idea of a, a series of stories about an agency called MI666. Um, mm. And couldn't really couldn't really make it work um and so i had been coming up with these stories for years i'd written versions of them in different short story collections and things in prose and it doesn't really it wasn't really working and then i was talking to vault comics um and we were talking about various things and during the conversation it all sort of just came together and i went hang on if i take that character from that pitch i had over there and i take this general idea of mi666 and then the new character who's the central character gina um sort of came into it um it all came together and so that's when where it came from so yeah i feel like i've been researching this book since i was 10 
So, you know, it's it's <laughs> been a long time coming. So thankfully, people are liking it because it would have been a dreadful thing to spend 30 odd years working on an idea and then no one liked it. Um, <laughs> I like yeah, it so already. I haven't read a word of it, but it's well, there you go. Go exactly and read it. Listen to your friend. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Find out of the way. They're in the mail. It's the, co it's the cocktail of my head. It's like everything that goes rattles around my head. Um, so, so, you, so you mixed in some scream. Yes. Here. Oh, there we go. Scream. So, yeah, See, the you, funny thing was this year or last year when we launched um, Shadow Service, Scream has now come back in the UK in the form of a Halloween special every year from 2018. Oh, um, and they asked me to finish the Dracula file because it never <gasps> finished. Oh, yes. And so it was just that really weird thing where it was, in, I kept talking about it in interviews and no one knew what the Dracula file really was. And then I suddenly got a phone call out of the blue, completely unrelated, saying, you like that strip, don't you? It was never finished. Do you want to write the last chapter? And so it was just, it, yeah, it was one of those moments when it all came together. So, um, nice. so yeah, so it was, it, it, that was a really bizarre thing. So yeah, so has, that been, has that it's been just, published? That's done already. Is this that's one, one of those. One? Yeah, it, it was one in that series. It, so there was two comic series in the um, around that time. In it was Misty, which was a horror comic for girls that was weekly and there was scream which was the boys one um and now rebellion owned both of, of you know all the back catalogs so they've been putting out these news one new ones bringing back the old characters so okay. yeah that was last year i, I hate this show chris i hate it <laughs> all it does is spend my money yes oh, oh tell me what... about it so scream i bought scream when i was a kid um and it was like 25p 10p a, a comic um the story is that my mum and dad hated me having it. They were really anti it mm. because it had blood all over the cover. I mean, for a kid's comic, it was properly, you know, bloodthirsty. So I hid them in my mate's den underneath his house <laughs> down the road. So, and no, so not porn, scary no, no, horror movies. Just, <laughs> horror comics. Yeah, exactly. I think that sums up my childhood. Um, it, and so he had this little, little crawl space underneath. It was like something out of it. Crawl space under his house. And we used to have horror club over there. So we used to read horror, like Fangoria. We used to read horror comics. We used to you know, read old paperbacks and stuff under there. Um, and you years used to later. Read down there too. Like not yeah, the yeah, story. Exactly. The reading yeah, yeah. crawl space. Yeah, you, it, we had, it was brilliant. We had lights. It was like, seriously, something was going to happen. Bad. Um, and years later, he moved, I moved, and I suddenly realized that my box of Scream was still sitting under that house. And I've never gone back to go to the knock on the door and say, excuse me, can I crawl under your house, please? So now I'm rebuying the magazines. Screen. Exactly. And it's like, every issue is like 20 quid now. And it's just like, no, they're under Mark's house. So. Well, and those those magazines and those news, uh, newspaper weeklies from the UK are so brittle from the 70s mm -hmm. and they're like they, yeah. to find a good condition one's so hard because yeah. i mean to be it, fair they'll be yeah. mush by now yeah in, you know, and you also have different much. paper sizes and we yeah, can't yeah. get bags and boards to fit any of the comics from, yeah. from britain so yeah, yeah. I mean, action forces yeah so we have yeah, yeah action forces the same size as the star wars ones from those years yeah. they're like yeah. magazine size but they're british magazine size and they're a little taller than our magazine boards yeah. So they're always yeah. sticking up out, out of the top. And they're really <laughs> thin and all newsprint, and they're really fragile, like Chris said. Rebellion have brought out editions of all these books. Um, mm. I think I could probably even put, yeah, put my hand on. So there's the Dracula Fire one, which is beautiful. Ooh, yeah, that's um, awesome. Look at that. Um, but even though I have these, I have to still go back and buy the originals naturally. So, you know, it's... Um, I, we understand that. We have the trades to read. And then we have yeah, our yeah. floppies that we keep in our boxes exactly. that we just stare at the beautiful. Of course, the exactly. art's just beautiful. And that's a yeah, lot yeah. of it. You can't, one a trade doesn't give you the art. I mean, when I look at your shadow service, I mean, do you did you have any art direction in that? Because like some of these covers are awesome. Yeah, yeah. Art. The entire team. Um, so when I write scripts, I usually put on the front of the script the solicitation for the issue and a, a couple of ideas for uh, covers mainly because before I, I was writing fiction mm. I was a ma I was a magazine editor so I spent my life coming up with covers and you know not for co comic stuff or some of it was but mainly you know I spent my life in cover meetings so I can't not put a cover idea through so I put them on and then Corin takes it away and twists it into something wonderfully freaky and and <laughs> so much better than my initial idea um, but it is, it is a proper team book that in the fact that you know everyone on the team puts their you know they're too pen thing about the covers and the um the graphic style we 
when we first put the book together, I, I did a, a mock-up of um, loads of different sort of 1970s and 1960s pulp spy fiction covers, um, and a lot of the James Bond re-releases for the Fleming novels, um, and a lot of them have that kind of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, motif and, and character style, so that's where she got it from, um, and yeah, they're, they're a delight, and so we've got, the first run is 10 issues, and, and the 10 covers as a whole, we're trying to work out what we can do with them as well, because the covers okay. are like posters. Um, so, um, and ho and hopefully it's going to you know continue beyond. So, it, with more to come. But yeah, they are beautiful. Corin is just amazing. It, there are more monsters in Shadow Service now because of Corin. Because even though I love <laughs> monsters, I probably yeah. wasn't ramping up the monster content as much as I wanted to. And then I started to see her monsters. And yeah, and so we're now cramming as many demons in okay, as we can. So that explains like by the time you got to issue five. Like, mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, you're throwing in, like, like I love the character development of the, the 666 team. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, you have the, I wish I had images to show, the this freaky master who is a kid who yes. floats in. Like, I mean, you've seen it. I've seen that sort of imagery before, but he's freaky. But then you, the, the guy that you created uh, that eats other other people to become yeah. them or whatever, it's just like. Yeah, Coil. Yeah. Yeah. The I it's like okay, I zombie times ten. Like it's yeah. so freaky how because uh, he he the because you end issue five with that sort of imagery. I'm like, what you you have to kill? Oh god, he eats a corpse and now he's gonna become this person. Yeah. Uh oh that yeah, was, so it, that, that was all there, but it was yeah, it was it was it, the in for those who've read it, and I know the other two will obviously read it now. <laughs> It's um, on the way. It just may have been delayed. On my I'm actually, yeah, if I, I look a little distracted, I'm ordering it right now. <laughs> oh, excellent. This is good. This is good. Um, there are these big skeleton statue things that uh, appear through the series, which weren't in the script at all. Um, and issue, I think issue two is when one first appears. Um, Corin just put it in. And so now they've become... That uh, that's That's one of them, yeah. So now they've become part of the story to the point <laughs> that... There was a mo this is why I love working in comics because there was a moment where I didn't actually know what a particular part of the mythos looked like. And then I realized that it's been literally staring me in the face when I go through pages because she's been putting them in the back of all the pictures. Mm. And so it, it it's going to look like we've planned it from day one, which is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was purely because, yeah, she, I mean, we've, we've got very similar tastes in mm -hmm. horror. Um, we've got very similar tastes in monsters. We are going, uh, as a little bit of a sneak peek, one of the few future issues have them going to a, strip, a, a demon strip club where the demons are stripping off their skin to reveal their demonic side underneath. She oh. has gone <laughs> mental wow. on that. Oh, um, wow. Fantastic um, idea. Because uh, we basically we keep thinking, about what's, the, what's the thing that you see in spy movies or you see in noir films, and how can we make it a bit more demonic? And oh, so... Neil Gaiman, and step aside. Up. <laughs> well, yeah, I, well, God, I would love that. I mean, he, he, Neil's one of my big heroes in you know in life because again, it's that entire. It's growing up in. I know it's not just us, but growing up in the seventies and eighties, you know, horror was a massive part of all our our lives yeah. as kids. You know, that's and, all I read was the Vertigo stuff. Hellblazer. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so, so far, Hellblazer. I mean, yeah, obviously there is a Constantine influence in Shadow Service, and I make no bones about that because you know I love Constantine so much um and yeah and that entire sort of you know Swamp Thing Vertigo people say that Vault is sort of like a new version of Vertigo and I think we're all very happy with that you know yeah. and we will take that whether it's true or not we will take it and we will put it on yeah, our it's a great line. Great I, it um I had heard of that but that, that definitely makes sense like just the books that Vault chooses to put out and the, the way they approach things how did, yeah so you said that you and Vault got had you already planned on writing a comic with vault we or... were talking we were okay. talking so there was a couple of ideas and i pitched something um that was okay but it, it didn't really fit um and so then we just started so we went back and we knew we wanted to work with each other so then we went back and it was just one of those conversations like what do we both like you know so it's adrian um the editor there um and i think so i was thinking along this way and i went well what if it was tinker taylor soldier witch and then he went right, right that book. like that too um so and then i had to go okay what is that story um and that that's the moment when i realized and it was weird it was one of those moments when i had this all going on in my head and i was like shit i've got to come up with a story now 
and I've sort of thrown <laughs> all these elements. I've thrown there's a ghoul that eats corpses, so you can infiltrate places. There's a witch who's a spy, and it nothing was working. And then I was listening to um, the the Sabrina soundtrack from Chilling Adventures, Sabrina, yeah. and there's a a yeah. cover version of um, Black Magic Woman. On, on it and I was literally walking late at night I think I think I've been to the cinema and I came back walking home and that played and that's when I saw the character that became Gina and it, it all just went there it is and um <laughs> so again when I get back to write Shadow Service now I listen to that track all the time and it is that for that's her attitude and that's how you know we know and I I, I played it to um Corinne when she was designing the character okay. as well. They've done so, a brilliant job with that show too. I can see oh, it's that amazing. Really inspired. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I have become a, a Sabrina fanboy. I never thought yeah. I would care about Archie stuff, and I can't no. get enough of it now because oh, some of the Archie horror stuff is just beautiful. I mean, the it only is. problem is it it has a habit of not ending. You know, so you know <laughs> we, we've got the afterlife just sort of finished. Yeah. Um, the the hunger one they did with turning Jughead, Jughead. Into yeah. Yeah. And, stuff. and yeah, and the Sabrina. The, I, I mean, yeah, that's just beautiful and the tv show my my daughter my young my eldest daughter who's for, from 14 has just started watching it but me and my wife have become addicted to it you know yep. and, and, I, and let's face it it's a you couldn't have done that show on network telly because it's got no. it's got no Satanists, you know yeah. and um <laughs> and and yeah and i love it and i love the fact that, of where they go with it and they go like we're actually going here and i think we're in the last season now aren't we so yeah. we're we've just started watching that um and they're going lovecraftian now so yeah it's um it's brilliant and it's, there's no art book i want an art book of the sabrina tv show mm, because yeah there's even little things that in their house they, they've got a wall of one shoe of a single shoes and it's the shoes of all their victims over the years because that's old witch folklore that they still eschew and so it's like there's loads of stuff if you know which folklore and i've spent too much time r reading about this shit, um you, you see it and you go and like all the image when they do their blackboards and they've got stuff you go oh god that's out and it's just thrown into the background it's so clever i love that they oh, use yeah. the hack artwork the the comic cover mm. hack artwork yeah, yeah. for the intro i thought that was a really yeah, nice yeah. nod to his stuff and uh and then they and then they they've got a quick panel which is like oh it was classic Sabrina the original well. yeah the, yeah, the yeah. original and splash so, page i love that yeah and From, so yeah uh, and Madhouse brilliant. 22 yep yeah um so yeah no it's a great show and yeah and it, it's very much in keeping it it's, i was again writing shadow service one when, when we were binging that so it, you know there is a, an element of um it's probably why it got darker very you know quicker again yeah but you know it, it's just such a great these guys it, they're gonna buy it now for sure yeah oh, go I'm, for it i already just bought it i just got to pull it yeah, all the way. <laughs> you're in time well you know if i if i'm here to do plugs which i am um issue <laughs> six issue six comes in in march and that's when we launch the next sort of arc in it and that's when the trade's out as well so okay. um hopefully you know it's gonna it's gonna run and run that's the plan you should have but, a quid um, of royalties coming my, coming your way from me <laughs> that's what i like to hear <laughs> <laughs> so, but how did you I mean I, you told us like this is what you wanted to write but you're not known as a witch doctor story writer you've done right. Vikings Transformers uh, uh, Frank, uh, the Star Wars ID, you, were, you were the IDW yeah. option guy or IP guy yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. how did you Transformers wait? Back to the Future oh there we go um, well the funny thing is I, I I think I set out to write this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then because of the, the way the industry works, you write what you can. And so yeah. I got, I became a middle grade, all age comic writer and, and, and prose writer working <laughs> on things. What it was, there was a, do you remember there was a, a show, um, a computer game called Skylanders, which had the little models and you put them on yeah. the portal and yeah. it appeared. So just as I, I went freelance and left my magazine job, I'd been working on things like Doctor Who for a while, um, and Penguin Books over here were doing the Skylanders books. Um, but before anyone knew what Skylanders was going to be a hit, they needed someone to turn around the kids' book really quickly. And I'd just gone freelance, so I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Um, and I ended up writing about 25 to 30 of them, um, just churning them out. And because of that, I sort of got into that thing of doing, I did lots of work on Angry Birds, I did lots of work on um, 
uh, on things like um, Penguins of Madagascar, all that sort of that time of all these these brands. And that sort of led me into IDW doing the Star Wars stuff. Because again, I got into Star Wars by writing middle grade because I was doing all this. So I became known to do being the licensed all grade, uh, all age middle grade guy. Um, mm. Who secretly just wanted to turn everything into horror, um, and and that's sort of the, it's sort of it may, yeah, exactly. Like Vegas, Vegas <laughs> Castle was the perfect way of, of doing this. And, um, and well, then, you, did, you did good because you chose Frank Frank Avila to do your freaking art covers, and I'm like, oh my well, god. Well, I mean, to be fair, I, I'd love to take credit for that. I can't. Oh. That was completely Mike Seglane. Um, I mean, Mike Seglane <laughs> at Lucasfilm is another yeah. massive horror fan. I mean, that's how we we got to know each other. We met obviously working on Star Wars. We started talking about Hammer and Universal and then sort of forgot to talk about Star Wars um, and brought the conversation back round because obviously in Star Wars, you have the two great horror icons of Peter Cushion and Christopher Lee. And we were at a con in San, San Diego saying about oh, what they should have had a story with Tarkin and, and Dooku. You know, I mean, there, yeah, there are there's a chance in Clone Wars, but they sort of missed that. Um, yeah. that we know of, but you know, and we and we kept started riffing on the story that what if Tarkin found a clone of Dooku and then that would make Tarkin Baron Frankenstein and Dooku would be the monster. Um, and that's what spun <laughs> into Vader's castle. Um, and that's, we yeah. weren't we, we weren't allowed to do that story, but we sort of did a version of it later when we came back, um, for the second series of it. Um, and so that's why in, in the first series of Vader's castle, Dooku becomes a vampire because. No, nah. um, and <laughs> we got Kelly Jones to draw it, you know, and Kelly's a massive Hammer fan, yeah. so he didn't use any references from Star Wars. Every reference he used in that entire short that story is a Hammer still, um, mm. and it really shows in the best possible way. Um, exactly. and so again, it was like that was me saying, Let's see how I can push the whole all age, how I can push it into horror yeah. without yeah. losing the all age thing. Because again, growing up over here, we had things like the Fighting Fantasy Choose Your Own Adventure books, which, you know, were horrendous. Um, and we all just lapped it up. So I wanted to do something about that to the point that some of my editors were going, are you sure kids can read this stuff? And I was sending them the stuff from my youth going, it hasn't done me any damage. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know you're writing it, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Vader's Castle, I, well, again, I'm so, we didn't know Vader's Castle was going to work. We didn't know people were going to love it. I mean, I was getting away with anything I could. It was like, you know, <laughs> sh shall I, you know, oh, can I can I do the Wicker Man with Ewoks? They're going to say no. <laughs> oh, no, hang on. They've said yes. Okay. Um, can I turn Duke into a vampire? Can I possess the ghost? You know, all these things. And then when they came around and said, right, let's do it again. It was like, so now I can do Frankenstein, can't I? And they were like, yeah, go on then. Um, so it's I love been, what you yeah, just did. I don't, did you have anything to do with the release of the new slipcase box set with the Virgin covers? Uh, well, yeah. Well, other than the fact that I knew they were doing it, yeah. But that's 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 beautiful. That's the way I just. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, not that I didn't think you knew, but I mean, did was that partially yeah, yeah. your idea or? No, was it wasn't it... my idea. That was IDW. IDW are so good at packaging this stuff now. Mm. Um, it was, and, it's a beautiful and, solicitor. So. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 lovely. Um, I feel really bad because people have brought me when we could still do cons. People brought that to me with the black with the blank one and saying, "Draw something," and I'm like, "Really? You show you want me to do it?" Um, but yeah. No, it's beautiful. Uh, that's uh, fantastic. We've just done the hard cover of it, which collects the first two as well, um, which is a good book. Um, but yeah, so and yeah, we've got there's we've got we had another one. We had a special last year, and if you read the last page of that, you know that there's something coming in the future. So Vader's Castle isn't going away, which is just again mind blowing because it was supposed mm -hmm. to be a one off, um, and it was when we were sitting in San Diego and we showed the picture of the zombie. Ewoks and the entire panel went berserk and we were like oh perhaps we've got something here um, yeah well it's sort of nice just to have a, a, an almost else worlds for a Star Wars fan mm. to have something that's just it's just fun it's the, the yeah. I mean Star Wars people I mean obviously you know this because you're a Star Wars but I mean Care, careful the, the, <laughs> these guys are <laughs> I am probably the least Star Wars out of this entire four person square uh, and I love Star Wars, but it's like they are so the, everything has to be exactly how it was originally was. If it's not, mm -hmm. but you were able to do an Elseworld story, not where people get excited about it. I love the covers. I love some of the books. I haven't, I, to be honest, I haven't read them all. So I, no, like no. when you're talking about the different things, I've like, read this one and crap, I don't think I read the right order to know which way. 
Um, yeah, but, I mean, I do see them. It's sort of the treehouse of horror for Star Wars. I mean, that's how I look yeah. at that book. And and when you get into the tricky world of canon, um, we like to say that all those stories happened. They might not have just happened in that way. So because they're basically fireside tales. You know, these are the horror stories that people tell around the fire on Tatooine or whatever. Um, and yeah. so, um, so yeah, all the things happened, but they might not necessarily be in that order. Or, you know, there is no... Dooku probably did turn into a vampire for a bit, but, you know, that might have been exaggerated, you know. <laughs> is there such a thing as Wergamorians? Well, there should be, so there are. In that story. Um, it's kind of like, for those, you were saying, I'm roughly the same age as you, I think, based on what you said earlier, and growing up in the late 70s, early 80s, with those comics from Marvel, which are completely off the wall. Oh, yeah. I think... I think there's there's the two sides of Star Wars fans, right? It better be exactly right. You better not screw up a single detail. Or it better be so outlandish that I don't have to worry about whether it fits into anything else. Yeah. So so I think the yeah, Vader's I mean, possible works on that on that level. So my Star Wars begins with Star Wars Weekly from Marvel UK. Before yes. I saw a film, I read um, the first appearance of Jackson in it. Um, yes. So for me... I was like, when Empire came out, I was like, well, where's the bunny? Because you know? I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't work it out because I reread those issues so much that he was, I, I read Jackson before I read Luke. because mm -hmm. So he was such a big part of my fandom. And then I suddenly realized that everyone hates him. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> as soon as I got to work in Star Wars, I tried to change that. Um, and I have been on a crusade to get Jackson into everything. Um, and... <laughs> And largely that's working as well. I just, it's, <laughs> it's definitely gone into a different kind of universe now these days. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could not honestly see why no one had a problem with the Admiral being a fish, but everyone had a problem with a smuggler being a rabbit. You know, so <laughs> that was always my argument. And in last year's Empire Strikes Back anthology, from a certain point of view, they let me do a Jackson story with Jackson oh. Orlando. And I got him to say, He's a fish. What's wrong with this? Um, because it doesn't make no sense that you know people say, "Well, you can't have a rabbit," but you can. I've never fish. thought of it in those terms before, yeah. and I can't. Yeah. I can't unsee that now. But he's green. Yeah, that's why it's, it's the color. If he'd been a different color, he'd be yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll give you that. He's a little bit seventies luminous. You know. <laughs> Again, music's really important when I write these things. So whenever I write Jackson, you know that was that Mecco Star Wars single. Oh my god, movie. the disco one? Yeah, yeah. So that that's thing's Jackson. awesome. In my head, that's Jackson's theme. So whenever I write Jackson, I play that at the beginning of the day. <laughs> because if, if there was ever a Jackson TV show, that would be the theme tune. Chris is like, what are you guys talking about? And then here I am, I'm like, I own two copies. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just thinking through like since you said, of course, being UK and everything, like we we've all gotten into trying to collect the Empire State weeklies or whatever, and like the original. But mm -hmm. the last few issues that are only UK original stories, you have the Paul Geary, Neary's uh, Death Ship, and some of those. Yeah. I'm like, those are so dark. And like when I'm thinking of Star Wars going dark, I mean, I don't know if you read that issue where. Oh yeah, many times. that that thing is it's a gorgeous cover for one thing, but it's also one of the scariest for a Star Wars story. And weird. It was yeah. like Alan Moore's Star Wars story. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I mean, what I'm really glad is that they did a, got it down here, they did a, a British, uh, when they did the omnibuses, they did a mm. British one as well. So you got that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the influence again, coming back to Shadow Service, the influence of 2000 AD is huge in those, you know. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, and so the funny thing, to get back to what we were originally talking about, I, I did sort of fall into this kind of thing. And even now, I write for 2000 AD, but I write there all age stuff, which is crazy. And again, I try and push it as much as possible. I wrote, I've wrote, i written um, Judge Anderson for them and Rogue Trooper for their all age stuff. But I've pushed it as far as I can. Um, yeah. Because for me growing up, 2000 AD was all ages, you know, yeah. and it was absolutely horrifying at the same time. And faces were getting melted off. And Rogue Trooper is one of the greatest <laughs> war comics in the world, which was read by kids. So... You know, I didn't have to do too much work to make, or you know, Rogue Trooper work. Um, but yeah, so it was. You know what comics is like? You get buttonholed. You know, you get pigeonholed or something. So it was a bit of a. I think Shadow Service has been great for me because I could show people and go, "Look, this is what I 
actually set out to do. Um, <laughs> and I've ended up doing all this other stuff, which I love. And don't get me wrong, I will never complain about writing comics that kids can read because we need kids to read comics. So, yeah. you know, um, and that's been the great thing with Star Wars Adventures is that people have come up and said, you know, I've been reading this with my kids. They're now reading the Marvel stuff because they've sort of aged up as well. And they're now reading Marvel and DC and they're reading all these other things as well, which is what exactly what we all, what happened to us mm -hmm. when, when we read them. And thankfully the industry is cottoning on to it that, you know, we need kids to read comics. So we need comics for kids because yeah. that's how it works. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, but I will naturally turn everything as dark as I can get away with. Even, even <laughs> to the point of the High Republic. Um, I started writing that book and I said to Mike, you do realize I'm writing a horror book, don't you? And he went, no, you're not. It's, the High Republic isn't a horror book. And about three issues in, he, he, I got an email from him going, yeah, it's a horror book, isn't it? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it by stealth. Um, so, because you know, what better than coming up with a glorious, shining, glittering version of the Jedi and then throwing them into the worst possible situation they can be in. But how did you go from... You got IDW has their High Republic book, but yeah. Marvel has theirs. But yet you're not the IDW High Republic guy. You're the Marvel no. High Republic, and that one Chewbacca yeah. book that you came out too. But yeah, yeah. How how did you um, get put on the Marvel versus the IDW? Yeah. Well, so um, so what happened was so I was invited along with the other four um, authors to be to take part in what became the High Republic. So, they, you know, they got us over to Skywalker, which was incredible, um, for basically Camp Star Wars. And oh. we came up with loads of story ideas. Um, and one of them became the High Republic. And so the five of us sort of, sort of tasked with, with bringing it to life. And again, this is all, I have to take my hat off to him. It's all Mike's acclaim because he, he chose the five of us um, and he knew what our strengths were but then he didn't play to them as such, you know. So he put Daniel, who's a prose writer on the IDW comic, you know, he put mm. Charles Soule, who obviously is a, a successful novelist, but is known for writing comics. He wrote the he wrote the first Del Rey novel. Um, and then people expected me to be writing the, the IDW, IDW comic because I was the main writer on Adventures. Um, I went in absolutely wanting to write the, the Marvel comic and made that my campaign from day one, but um, you know, it was we didn't actually have a choice in what our assignments were. We all came up with the story together, and we were working on it for a long time before we got our assignments. So we were working generally on the story, which then would go on to become the books and the comics. And then a year and a half into the process, that's when we were given our our assignments, and we, you know, which parts that we were we were going to do. And because we're all doing more than one thing, so yeah. I've been writing the. Marvel comic I've written the second Del Rey novel. Um, Justine has written, wrote the first um, middle grade. She's written the uh, second YA, and she's working on the manga as well. So we've all moved around, and we've all sort of oh, wow. had a chance to tell. Yeah, it's a fantastic different... setup the way you guys have it. It's it is fascinating. Yeah. I agree. And how how interlocked are they? Um, is it necessary to read it all? I mean, I assume you know the grand plan. Obviously, you can't spoil the yeah. grand plan, but I mean, I hope it's, I hope it's people do read them all because, you know, that's how it's been designed. But we have tried to make it as easy as possible to read. Just, uh, I just read about, if someone just wants to read YA, they can read the YA books. You know, if someone wants to read the middle grade books or the kids books, they can just read those. But we have tried to do it that, you know, if you read them all, you get, to be fair, yeah, we've, looked at, comic, we've, so we've looked at comic crossovers. Um, again, most of us in that room, uh, uh, if we didn't write comics, at the beginning, most of the people in the room, actually all of them now have written comics. Um, I think when we were started, me and Charles were the only two that had written comics. Mm -hmm. um, I think Claudia was starting to write The House of L for DC, or was talking to them about The House of L. Um, but we all come from a comic reading background. So immediately we started talking about Secret Wars and Crisis and, and just those massive you know, things, again, that started with Secret Wars 2 when you had the massive crossovers. And for me, again, we go back to the Marvel UK runs, the Secret Wars weekly blew my mind because I I was a Marvel UK fan, but I never realised up to that point how interlocked the Marvel U was because, you know, they didn't perhaps re reprint everything. So, you know, seeing that first issue of Secret Wars and seeing the Fantastic Four standing by the Avengers, standing by, you know, Spider-Man, um, and the X Men, it just, yeah, it just, it blew my mind. And then that weekly was amazing for a young comics fan because what they did was 
um, they went through Secret Wars, and then they went into Secret Wars 2, and they would print the issue of Secret Wars 2, then they would print the issue of Power Pack, then they would print the Secret Wars issue 3, and then they would print Iron Man. And you got the entire connected story if you follow Exactly, it. and they, they edited some of the things so you wouldn't, you wouldn't lose, you know, if there was ongoing mm. stuff that was in the original runs. Um, mm -hmm. But then sometimes they would say, well, we're not going to be able to just jump straight into that issue of, like, the center of armor for Iron Man. We need to go back a couple of issues so readers know. So it was like a primer for the entire Marvel Universe. And weirdly, the backup strip was Alpha Flight. And so there is an entire group of generation of Marvel fans who Alpha <laughs> Flight is more important than the Avengers because we read that story before we actually knew what Avengers stories were, you know. So, um, and so yeah, we talked, we went back and talked about that, and then obviously every every event that's happened since, well, you know, and and that idea of if you read it all, you'll get the entire picture, but you can read, you know, um, yeah. temples and get you know a story. We're hoping, obviously, the hope is that. If you read the comic and you don't usually read the books, you might go, oh, I'll pick up one of the books. Or, you know, and we've had people who've never read a, well, haven't read a children's book for years, and now they've picked up the middle grade because they, you know, some of the characters follow through. Um, you've got to be and, careful. You don't want to bankrupt people as yeah. well. Um, yeah, and you don't want people to go, oh, there's too much. I can't follow it. Um, so it's trying to get the balance. I do appreciate, though, with, with this High Republic or whatever, I don't have to know a lot of lore. I don't have to okay. know, like I can pick up the High Republic novel and I can read it and I don't have to know, I, ha I don't have to read Timothy Zahn's 1200 books or Kevin J. Anderson's b books or whatever. I can just read but you High should. Republic. Yes, I, I have read. <laughs> <laughs> you, should. you should read definitely uh, some of those, but you don't have to because those things are no. sometimes a beast to try to track down because libraries yeah, yeah. have checked out their used books they're 20 bucks there's a used book and you're just like okay wait a yeah. minute i just want to read a story but i can pick up high republic read that and be fine they, yeah, there's character but you also bring in enough of the characters from the or characters that look like characters from the movies yeah, yeah. like because i know yoda's a part of it and uh and different ones and you have pete had the the kids book that you did with chewbacca mm -hmm. i don't know if it's a chewbacca or a, just say no 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 so, different yeah. character different yeah. character yeah. So, well there's yeah, the, there's I mean, the thing too where you have a new you have a new fan base for star wars that started with clone wars mm -hmm. and they got their new movies they got their they got their sequel movies that you know essentially what we had as the original trilogy when we were kids and now here they are with their movies and their cartoon but they have no comics or this is their jumping off point for their literature yeah, yeah well, that's, that's exactly the point you know it's a let's face it it's become it's a dense universe and uh, i i was a star wars fan through the sort of wilderness years of no no films but so many comics and books and to the point that i couldn't keep up with it you know yeah. it, it, mm. i i read majority of the dark horse comics but I just didn't have time to read all the books, and I'm now going back and filling in the gaps of the ones I haven't read. And and so we really wanted it to be that point where you could read. You, yeah, you you have a general interest in Star Wars, um, and you've read, you've watched the films. You might have seen Rebels. You might have w be watching the Manda, you know, Mandalorian. And here's a no, new chance to 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 delve into something without having to do, get the encyclopedias that I have behind me on the shelf because we're, that's our job, you know. Yeah, and then. Hopefully, for the long-term fans, and whether that's a fan who became a fan with new Disney canon or someone who has been reading the EU for as long as it's been around or pre Timothy Zorn fiction as well, um, mm -hmm. we, we sprinkle in enough references. So if, you're, if you don't know what they are, they don't mean anything. I think there's one in issue two which came out today where one of the Skier, the, the Trandoshan Jedi, swears and he swears an ancient um jedi name which will mean nothing to most people but people who know a certain book will go oh that's that thing from old from the eu um and that's what i mean let's face it star wars has been doing that oh, since eggs are cool. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's face it, you know, we, we all sat through that first film and obi-wan was going Oh, when I was a was a Jedi Knight in the Clone Wars, and you're like, what the what now? The what what how why? What? <laughs> and we didn't know what that was, and we didn't know right. what that meant, but it sounded the coolest thing in the world. And it was only yeah. through the entire original series films, we didn't really know what a Jedi looked like, other than Obi Wan and 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 Luke. And so 
then it everything came afterwards. So Star Wars has been brilliant at doing that thing of of going, you know, dropping in naming planets and names mm. and insults that Leia gives Han, and then later <laughs> filling in what that actually means. And so it means that you have the ability when you write this expanded fiction to do that naturally because people expect it. And and yeah, and there are there are always new generations. I'm an old school fan, so I I would love that some old fans come with us as well. But you know, and and I let's we don't want to get into the entire arguments of the Star Wars fandom. But I try and put enough stuff in there that you know that people realise that we love this stuff. You know, while also making it new. Like for my kids, you know, I got two daughters. They their introduction was Rebels. I could not get them to watch Star mm. Wars. I tried to get them to watch Star Wars. They were not interested in Star Wars. And then one day they came into the kitchen and went, Dad, come and see this. Is this that Star Wars you like? And it was the first episode of Rebels, which was on whatever it was on Cartoon Network or something, or you know, Jetix probably. Um, and I went, this is probably the most Star Wars thing I've seen in years. Yes, what is this? And we, we ended up watching it together. Um, <laughs> And they became Star Wars. I mean, my eldest is now at that point where she's sort of, yeah, she's sort of, she loves Mandalorian, but she loves a lot of other things as well. My youngest, her room is a shrine to Chewbacca. Um, and <laughs> I think she wishes Chewbacca was her dad. And I keep telling her, he's a rubbish dad. He disappears for decades and Lumpy hasn't seen him for ages. <laughs> but she won't listen to me. Um, so wait, is and, that why you wrote that book that Pete held up? You wrote it for your daughter? The, no, uh, one of the reasons, I mean, as soon as I know, as soon as we we had, I knew there was going to be a, a Wookiee Jedi. I had to write that, you know, put him in the, <laughs> the in holiday the special. May not be canon for Star Wars fans, but it's canon for three CM folks. Well, <laughs> of course, <laughs> as we announced last week, I've co-written the Life Day Treasury of short stories, which may <laughs> may um, which comes out next this year, later this year, and may delve into some of the holiday special. Oh, the Lego oh, holiday nice. special was oh, the Lego. Did you see? Did you watch the Lego one? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, so good, so good. So many good, so many good things in there. Um, and again, I've been fighting to do a, a Christmas book for Star Wars, um, but I'm basically just going. I want to tell stories of Chewie's family, please. Thank you. And um, <laughs> and 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 also with that book, we're telling stories like ghost stories from older on. We're telling, you know, we're doing we're doing that entire. We have a. Um, we have an Ewok story, which is basically the Ewoks version of the Krampus. What's that? You know, so um, <laughs> again, it's a kid's book, but it's supposed to be a family book. So there's horror in there as well, because of I'm course so <laughs> you're there. <laughs> so sad. Um, it's not bad, it's actually what I do. Um, but yeah, again, Christmas is supposed to be for ghost stories. It's literally in the song. Yeah. So, come on, you know, Dickens, all the way back to Dickens. Let's come on now. Exactly. exactly. Um, so yeah, how did we get to this point? Oh. Yes, sir. it's the inside of my head. <laughs> so, I mean, we'll, we'll run through just some of the. I mean, I, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking Shadow yeah. Service. I, I, I'm glad we sold these two guys on reading it. Hopefully, we sold yeah. people that are watching oh, that watch it that they'll check it out. Uh, mm -hmm. Mainly just because we get to see the horror side of you. And now I'm going to read these Star Wars books, knowing the guy who wrote it really likes scary stuff. So let's see how scary. So where is it? It's got to be in here somewhere. <laughs> But I do have to ask, there's a book coming out, I believe, next week for DC that you had a part in. Is that right? Oh, yes. Yeah. The, uh, um, this thing here? Valentine special. Yeah, there okay. we go. Ah. So is it is it a horror story in there, judging by the cover? No, that one's not, actually. So that one's a <laughs> Hawkman and Hawkwoman story. Has it got horror element? Well, it's got a, an Egyptian tomb. So uh -huh. actually, <laughs> thinking about it, let me just check. <laughs> Well, they do creep. So you see Hawkman and Hawkwoman in their various incarnations. Um, and so they are breaking into an Egyptian tomb. But you don't actually see any any monsters in that it's part. A, it's a love story, right? I mean, it's the Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day special. So. Yeah, yeah. As far as you know, you get, you know, but that means there has to be fighting because it's DC. Oh. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, there, there's a mummified monster in it. So there we okay. go. Um, nice. yeah. <laughs> so... So you got that coming out. You of course have High Republic came out this week. Yeah. Uh, you also you're doing this too. The Back yes. to the Future Transformers. That I don't know yes. how what the, what issue this is issue one. This is the I, everyone wanted this cover because it's this toy that Pete actually showed us earlier. He actually has the toy. <laughs> yeah, but the toy. what issue is this on? So well, there has been a delay on that one because of one of the when you're writing a licensed comic it has issues anyway because it has to go through so many people mm -hmm. when you're writing a licensed mashup comic 
you have to go through two lots of people and then the world stops um and entire <laughs> companies get put on on you know furlough and so there has been a delay so we're, we issue two came back a, a while back next month issue three and four will be coming out okay. to, to finish off um and that was just i mean we're all we we're all a bit heartbroken by it but it was just the way the world worked for a bit and so you know we were all fit, uh, it was just getting stuff approved um so yeah we're halfway through that it was again one of those things when they said do you want to do this and i was like well that doesn't make any sense i mean oh actually it really does because that yeah no actually it works completely <laughs> um and so i always say i want my tip my my to-do list to be the same as it was when I was 10. Mm. Um, so having Transformers and Back to the Future in there really works. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah. I, I think get... I keep the horror stuff for the minimum on that, but you know, there is, there's a little bit. There's no like zombies, DeLoreans walking around and... Uh... You might see Megatron's skull at one point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the, the rising storm coming in the summer. Yes. Summer, oh, yeah, yeah, June, June, end of June. So that's the second Del Rey novel um, of the High Republic. Okay. Um, initiative, um, and so that's written, and I can't really say anything about that. Yeah, looking forward to it though. <laughs> cool, cool. Damn, something I can get you to slip. We should have done this at night. Well, no, it is his night. Wait, yeah, it's nice. It's clock in the evening. Right? It's really nice tired. Night. Double drinks, and then maybe I should be on the whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> loved it loved after it after it drops it'd be great to have you back on and, and chat about it once you can talk about it yeah no absolutely i mean it's half the problem with all this stuff it's so nice to even be able to talk we we've been working on the high republic for nearly two and a half years now probably more than that and so mo majority of that time it's been secret it's even not been known it was under that appalling the period when we just had a code name that we could talk about where we couldn't talk about anything else which infuriated <laughs> us so much blue um, harvest blue harvest or beyond was, well, this, one, this one was project luminous so they announced oh, it was yeah. project <laughs> luminous and, and it was just that entire and it was you know it was great and it got people talking but there was also a we're just going look can we just talk about it please um so now we can talk about it and we don't actually know what we can say and what we can't because there is the worry that we're just going to go ah, blah, 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 and just say everything yeah. because we spent so long it was funny when we first announced that it was even a thing, a com uh, um, celebration in Chicago. We did a panel and they announced that they, we, we, we just did a writer's panel. No one knew it coming to the panel, we were going to announce anything. It was just five writers talking. And then they suddenly threw a picture of us up on the back at Skywalker Ranch. And then we said, we're doing this thing between the five of us. It's coming out in 2020, which was now, we know, a lie because the end of the world. Um, and it's called Project Luminous. They whisked us off that stage and we went on to, if you've ever been seen footage from Celebration or you've been Celebration, they usually have the Star Wars show going on in the middle and they bring star, you know, bring stars on and writers and all kinds of things into a mosh pit of Star Wars fans. And so we were pulled off this thing where we could finally say some words that were connected to what we were doing and put onto a stage with microphones and no PR people around us. And Mike was terrified that we would just go, and here's what happens in year three. <laughs> um, because it was just like, and because we were just in that sense, can we talk about, we can talk about, we can talk about everything. And um, he was in the background going, don't say a word. And that was in the exhibit, and that was in the exhibitor hall too. It was that platform yes. in the exhibitor hall. Yeah, yeah. I was there. Yeah. And, Which uh, is weird. Yeah, and it's just a bizarre people up. thing. I do, yeah. I do, a, you know, I do a lot of conventions, but actually, you literally have a mosh pit in front of you of Star Wars fans yep. who are being up high, right? I mean, it's yeah, like it's... And they've been in kept, they've been kept there for three hours, and they've been bribed with t-shirts, and you know, you can tell they're all going a bit stir crazy, and then anything you say, they're like, yes, Basically, and yeah. so it was, it was the energy in that room was insane, and so yeah, we were all a bit confused, um, and now yeah, so now I think every one of us has had something out as of today. So Daniel's comic, My DW, was the last thing of the first wave that's out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but we're we're still a little bit of like, what can I say and what can't I say? And so, did you guys know like, okay, and Kylo Ren, we're gonna have a holocron hologram like Phantom Menace, and that's gonna be the alluding to this High Republic world, or is, like, did you guys already know that was planned, or like? No, it... because I, when that was Charles, that was the good. The good thing is, what we were doing is because while we were planning this, we were writing other Star Wars. So, mm -hmm. we 
pitched five different versions of what became the High Republic. And one was the High Republic, and even that wasn't quite what it is now. But there was mm. these other four things. And at that time, I was writing the Dooku Jedi Lost audio play um, drama thing. And in that, there are references to all five pitches because I didn't know which was going to be made. But I, because of the way my <laughs> brain works, I wanted to put Easter eggs in. Also, so it would be the first time any of this stuff was mentioned. Um, so when it's on Wikipedia, you claim it was my idea. Yeah. It was yeah, me. Yeah. So <laughs> if you go onto Wikipedia and you look, you look at High Republic Age, it says first first mention Dooku Jedi lost. Um, <laughs> nice. Meanwhile, Charles is doing the same. Charles is doing the same in start in Kylo Ren. Um, Claudia is doing the same in Master and Apprentice. And so we were all out Easter egging each other. Um, and yeah, and so that Charles has the Operation Starlight in the in the Marvel run, you know. So we were working all this stuff because that's been the joy of doing it. Because we also write other Star Wars, we could start putting those Easter eggs in. And so, yeah, so there's been Easter eggs for, there's been some Easter eggs in Vader's Castle that people haven't noticed yet, or people don't even know about because it it relates to stuff that hasn't happened yet. So that stuff's always fun. It's always fun. Yeah, to exactly. stuff to Go back to. Exactly. Now, Tof now Tofer doesn't the, have to do his his, uh, his research. Now you just answered his his biggest <laughs> burning question. Where is the first mention of anything High Republic? Oh, there it is. First mention is in yeah. There's loads of mentions in Dooku. There's loads of things, and also there's the stuff then which has become retroactively linked to the High Republic. So other stuff we've done since we've gone. Oh, we can do this, and also beyond the five of us because the five of us are working on it. But then you've got Doctor Afra is is currently excavating High Republic artifacts and things like that. So it's been great to see it sort of like trickle out as well. Mm -hmm. And likewise, we're seeing other stuff in the other comics and the other books, and we're going, oh, we can have that and pulling that in. You know, walking <laughs> around walking around Batu and going, that could be High Republic. And so it's it's things like that. And that's what makes all of these. But isn't again, it's it's the it's the old comic universe tricks you know it's it's going back and retrofitting stuff and putting stuff in it's what dc and marvel have been doing for you know literally decades yeah um and so we're we've taken all our lessons from there and if you're going to learn from people learn from the best yeah yep. and it's really fun it is really fun for the new generation of fans too i mean i've got a almost two-year-old he he knows like 20 words and two of them are soka mm. and and grogu so <laughs> so he's he's on board already and this will be the stuff you read so <laughs> look at look at the the mcu is just literally the marvel universe put on the screen so there you go do that and then do that over there and so for my kids we're watching one division and then they immediately go onto youtube and there's like a 40 easter eggs in in episode yeah. three or that kind of thing and for me it's like man you know it's like ambrosia from the gods because now i've got my 11 year old going talking about Avengers storylines from the 80s when she has no interest in reading comics. So now it's my job to make her read those comics. But she's now doing, she's getting the Easter egg thing now. And so, and also obviously within the MCU, when she realized that that character was in that movie, but as a different, it was like, you know, it's all that stuff going on. And I'm seeing in her the exact things that have led to me. <laughs> so the <laughs> poor kid. But um, it's, it's the way the brain, you know, our brains work as, as comic geeks and, and collectors. It just yeah. feeds into it, and so the M I think the MCU is just genius because it's all it is doing is doing it again, but in a different media. And so, um, and uh, now the trick is to get people to go back and read the comic as well. Yeah, yeah, that's man. You, I'm sitting going, okay, crap. How do I make sure that I get the Frank Cavilla cover? That's all like that. I need to go read all of your IDW books just to see. Mm -hmm when is this okay now i need to read okay now i'm gonna have to have them side by side when is this word does it appear in this issue uh it, <laughs> no, but see I that's what's you. great you don't have to do that though <laughs> yeah you can do that it'll be a little bit more rich mm. but you don't but that's the great thing yeah. right is, yeah. is that we don't have to know all that stuff it's just yeah, fun well, to do. It, it's um Cy spuria always says and i thank him for this because I can steal it, um, that an Easter egg should never be there to beat someone around the head. An Easter egg is a reward um, yeah. for knowing something. And likewise, it should never be something when you feel left out because you haven't realized it's an Easter egg. It should never be that moment where it's so obviously an in-joke that yeah. you don't know. Again, it's like little things like in in WandaVision, when you realize that the the registration numbers are the issue numbers of the first time vision appeared you know and things like that so it's yeah. it's those little moments as well it's it's putting all those little things in that if you have been a long-term fan and you have that kind of brain 
you get it and you feel glad you know because it makes you part of the ga of the gang you make you part of the group yeah. um but for like my wife who loves stuff like this but doesn't want to get into all the references and all the um you know stuff like that it just goes completely overhead and she loves the story you know yeah mm -hmm. uh, yep what's the other one i loved oh um in heroes i think number plates i always look at number plates because again that's how i work and in heroes when um um oh god who played sulu his name's gone out of my head um, uh, Hikai, uh, George Takai? Takai? Oh, Takai, yeah. When he turns up in Heroes, his yeah. registration oh. number is the Enterprise's reg registration number. And it's little, yeah, yeah. So it's all those things <laughs> where you, you you can see if you if you know, but it doesn't affect you. So yeah, my wife just did she didn't even know she's not really she wasn't a Star Trek fan. I have made her one <laughs> over the years. Um <laughs> but not to the point that you know she would she she realized it was Sulu, but she didn't yeah. then notice that his car had the same registration number as the Enterprise, and would hate if she ever did. <laughs> I've realized what you've made me do during this during this day today. You've made me strip off my skin and reveal my nerd demon <laughs> to to the world. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hey, surely, on, surely on a show like this, everyone knows that anyway, because it's oh, not yeah. what we. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to be ashamed of here. No, no, exactly. There's no geek shame at all. No, no. Race it. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, man, I'm sitting there going, I could, we could sit and talk for a long time uh, <laughs> about geeking out, but at the same time, I, I know I don't want you to get in trouble with the masters of Disney and Star Wars, because if we keep pulling, we might pull more information out of you. Uh, but uh, sh got Shadow Service, uh, so you say mm -hmm. issue six is coming out next week? Six no, is out next, month. Uh, next month. Next um, month. So March, yeah, and then um, the, the next run is issue six to ten, and then after that, it's a case of Let's see how the book goes, um, but but yeah, so it's been it's been really well received so far. We're doing a bit of a sort of relaunch with the so thought. Do that thing when they you know they leave a couple of months between um, mm. arcs, so people can you know take time like to read other comics as well. Yeah, and then also it means that come March, if you haven't read any of it, you can pick up the trade, and so yeah. in one hit, mm. you know, you can pick up the trade and then get the next part. So I think it's a really good model. Um, so we're doing that. So we're doing a bit of a sort of soft relaunch uh, with that issue. Exactly the same story is continuing through, but it's like you know, it's a good jumping on point. Um, yeah. We in that one, we we've seen MI six 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 working in Britain. Now we're doing that thing where in a James Bond movie, he gets his mission and he goes off to in. Yeah. In the case of Shadow Service, they go to Rome. So, um, so yeah, and, and Corin has killed herself by drawing lots of detail. If you've ever seen, follow Corin's Twitter feed. Mm. Her background, she put it puts into everything. She, the backgrounds are in, immense. Um, and the detail she puts in, and I'm constantly putting in the script, please don't kill yourself. And every <laughs> time, he really does. And I knew when I, I, I said, we're going to Rome, I knew the fountains she would be drawing. And... Yeah. Yeah, they're incredible. So, mm. um, so yeah, it starts a bit of a travel log from that one when when you start cool. going around Europe. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you so much for joining us uh, once again, guys. This is three comic Bonnie co comic co contributor chats. We're just sitting there. We shoot in the bull of uh, Kevin Scott. Uh, of course, you're reading High Republic because everyone is. It's a great Star Wars book, and I'm excited about the novel coming out. Uh, but you. also check out Shadow Service. It, if you haven't, if he didn't sell you on it, believe me, Mike and Pete will tell you how good it is whenever when they get their copies that they just ordered. Um, yep. And mm -hmm. we're, it, it is a good story. And a lot of times, Vault is having some great stuff. Scout mm -hmm. has some great stuff. Source Point. Check out some of those smaller indie publishers for what they're doing. But evidently, IDW has some great horror books that are not sneaky horror books that Kev Kevin's <laughs> written that you need to check out because he's sle sneaking in some of these mummies and some uh, vampire dukus <laughs> and different things into his books that you need to check out as well. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. This is fun. You know, this is this yeah. is the, what you want to do. You want to sit and talk comics. And so, you know, exactly. it's been good. great. Thanks. Well, thank, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully yes. we'll catch up with you again soon. Hope so.